Welcome back. We're in Exodus chapter 3, verse 19 to 22. Let's close out the chapter. But I know that the king of Egypt will not permit you to go except under compulsion, so I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my miracles, which I shall do in the midst of it. And after that, he will let you go. I will grant this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall be that when you go, you will not go empty-handed. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor and the woman who lives in her house articles of silver and articles of gold in clothing, and you will put them on your sons and daughters. Thus, you will plunder the Egyptians. So Pharaoh's not about to let the Hebrews go. They are under his hand, and they're under his power, and he's not going to do it. But guess what? There's a bigger and more powerful hand than Pharaoh's hand, and God says by a strong hand, literally, he's going to more or less compel, force the Pharaoh to let them go. Pharaoh's plan is nothing more than just, just only hardship for the Hebrews, but the only way to deal with bullies is you've got to come in and actually actually use the force you have. You've just got to execute. And so God is going to come in and address this bully, this uh, national, this, this ethnic bullying, this eth bullying of a people. So when God strikes Egypt with all of his miracles, this means uh, revelation on a national scale of the power and the potency of the God of the Hebrews. The God of the Hebrews has a, a total superiority over the deities of Egypt. And you know, when Pharaoh chose to block God's plan to bless his people, that's when Pharaoh kind of stood up and put himself in the midst of, you know, the oncoming locomotive, because you know, when God's coming towards you and you're getting in God's way, not a good, not a good plan. And here comes Pharaoh and he's going to stand against the God of the Hebrews. Well, we'll see how that all kind of sorts itself out over these next few chapters, won't we? So Pharaoh's about to learn an important lesson and have his nation wrecked in the process. But there you go. So the assurance comes that God will absolutely overpower Pharaoh in the end. And not only that, but God's people, you know, their, their labor's been exploited, their wealth, their, their, the benefit of their labor has gone to Egypt. Now they're going to leave with plunder. And when he brings up plunder, that's an interesting word. As soon as you use the word, the idea of plunder, uh, that kind of brings up the perspective of what, what is this prospect here. It's, it's, this is war. And Moses understands now from what God says to him, we're talking about war here. And the Hebrews are going to take plunder on their way out of the place. So that's what you've got. God will go to war to defend his people and restore their liberty. And he will do the same for us today if we're willing to let him fight for us and if we're willing to team with him. And we'll see the deliverance of God in our own lives, in our own places where we need deliverance. Friend, see you tomorrow morning.